If a man is in the middle of nowhere and there isn't a woman around, is he still wrong? Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action thriller film called Sweet Girl. The film opens with an adrenaline-pumping police pursuit. Helicopters score the skies, hunting for an individual. The lens shifts to our lead character, Ray, positioned at the brink of a skyscraper. As the police spotlight finds him, FBI personnel converge on the location. A police officer instructs him to surrender, stating that it's over, but Ray retorts that things weren't meant to go this way. He spins around and takes a daring leap off the precipice, plunging hundreds of feet into the water below. Time rewinds significantly, revealing Ray on a nature hike with his spouse and child. They traverse a scenic woodland and set up a campsite by a stream where their little girl, Rachel, snoozes in her mother's embrace, and Ray gazes lovingly at his wife, Amanda. Amid these vivid shared moments, a tragic development transpires. Amanda is suddenly stricken with cancer for a second time and is rushed to the hospital. The doctor suggests a drug called Infirmem, but the family is unable to afford it. As days slip by, they commemorate Rachel's birthday, with Amanda gifting her a teddy bear named Paloma. Ray and Rachel are depicted training in a boxing ring, where she cleverly outmaneuvers her father. At the medical facility, the doctor notifies them that the FDA is close to approving a cheaper drug named Sparrow, with effect similar to Infirmum. Ray echoes Rachel's delight at this promising news, but it soon transpires that the new drug hasn't yet become available. Upon inquiry, the doctor reveals that its release has been indefinitely delayed due to a payoff by Bioprime, the makers of Informa. A televised interview with the CEO of Bioprime, Simon Keeley, shows him clashing with a politician about the steep prices of cancer therapies. Ray calls into the program and confronts Keeley, asserting that his wife's life is in jeopardy due to Keeley's commercial strategies and threatens his life if Amanda should die. Subsequently, Ray is seen comforting Amanda. Rachel attempts to soothe her with a soft tune, but to no avail. A distressed Ray departs the room, meandering aimlessly through the hospital corridors, and finally breaks down in tears as Amanda passes away. Half a year later, we find him back in the boxing ring, his heart still racked with sorrow. He returns home, where a pile of bills greet him. Rachel advises Ray to ignore them, and amidst their playful banter, Ray receives a phone call from Martin Bennett, a journalist at Vice. Martin asserts that he's challenging Bioprime and other corporate giants involved in corruption, and Amanda's death could aid him in his cause. He urges Ray to rendezvous with him in 20 minutes. Ray instructs Rachel to stay home, and heads off to the subway where Martin beckons him aboard. Rachel seems to be trailing him, and she too steps into the subway car. They disembark at the next station, which is where Ray finally encounters Martin. Martin explains about the kickbacks and offshore accounts owned by Simon Keeley, emphasizing that with Ray's testimony and assistance, they can successfully incarcerate Keeley and other influential figures permanently. Ray asks for a moment to contemplate his options, while Rachel strains to eavesdrop on their conversation. As they chat, an unexpected assailant materializes, plunges a knife into Martin's torso, and eliminates him. Following this, the assailant turns his focus to Ray, pummeling him over and over, while a horrified Rachel watches. Ray retaliates with a couple of heavy hits and propels him through the window, but the assailant counterattacks. Rachel also intervenes, but the hitman simply flings her out the door just as the train comes to a stop. Ray, resilient, strikes the hitman again, rushes out to check on Rachel, but the attacker lunges again, stabbing Ray in the side. He pushes Ray out the window as the train pulls away. Lying on the platform, Ray and Rachel's eyes meet, and both of them lose consciousness. Two years later, we see Rachel energetically boxing in the ring. She battles fiercely, almost choking her opponent who is trying to tap out. Her lack of restraint is evident. Subsequently, we meet Diana Morgan, a political figure collaborating with Simon Keeley and Bioprime chairman Vinod Shah to formulate a bipartisan law and agreement. Rachel wakes up and engages in conversation with Ray about Amanda. Ray moves to a corner of the room where a comprehensive investigative project is plastered on the wall. His eyes rest on a UNICEF charity auction event where Simon Keeley is slated to deliver the keynote address. 
That evening, as esteemed guests assemble for the auction, Ray also pulls his car up nearby. He slips in through the back entrance and procures a caterer's outfit. Concurrently, Simon is beckoned on stage for his speech, and Ray slips an out-of-order sign into the men's restroom. He steps into the main hall just as Simon concludes his oration. Spotting Simon at a table, Ray swiftly snatches a glass of scotch, spills it on him, and slips away. An irate Simon leads his security to the restroom, where the sentry is assaulted and murdered with a fire extinguisher. Ray smashes the door and plunges a blade into Simon's neck. He reminds him that he had warned him about Amanda's death and probes about the planned hit on Martin Bennett. Simon initially tries to evade the question, but under duress, divulges the name Vinod Shah. While they're engaged in conversation, one of Simon's guards attacks Ray, triggering a fight. Ray overpowers both adversaries and commands Simon to shoot his own guard. The situation escalates into a struggle for the firearm, ending with Ray suffocating Simon to death with a plastic bag. Later, he returns home and instructs Rachel to pack up everything, explaining that he was left with no other option but to kill them. At the crime scene, the FBI interviews a security guard who relays the bits of conversation he overheard concerning a female and a death threat. Agent Sarah Meeker commands a recall on all death threats issued against Simon Keeley. In the meantime, Ray and Rachel journey along desolate back roads, aiming for Toronto, while the agents finally secure a match and identify Ray Cooper as the one who publicly threatened Simon Keeley's life. They also pinpoint Ray's vehicle leaving the scene of the crime. Sarah promptly orders the installation of a tracker on Ray's vehicle, which is captured crossing a toll booth, and the details are relayed to two hired guns. Ray and Rachel pull up at a motel, and while Ray unloads their gear from the car, he dispatches Rachel to their room. Instead of following his instructions, Rachel dials Sarah from a payphone and divulges the whole story, asserting her father's innocence and insisting a mistake has been made. Sarah gives Rachel her personal number, advising her to get in touch using an untraceable phone. Rachel abruptly hangs up the call just as Sarah is asking for her location. Ray steps into the lobby, attaching a bell to the main door as a makeshift alarm. He then proceeds to their room where he finds Rachel upset with him for his previous harshness. As the scene switches to the mercenaries infiltrating the motel, the bell rings out as they push open the entrance, alerting Ray who's now wide awake. He stealthily evacuates the hallway with Rachel, laying in wait. The hitman rounds the corner, prompting a struggle between him and Ray that spills down the staircase. After successfully choking out the first mercenary, Ray engages with the second one. He seizes an axe and retreats to the bedroom, pursued by the assailant. Inside, Ray takes cover in a closet, and when the hitman nears, launches a surprise attack that sends them crashing out the window and onto a car. Ray fights off the hitman, ultimately killing him with his own weapon. As he rises, he catches sight of Rachel, watching him in shock. He quickly collects himself, picks up the firearm and extra magazines, and takes off. Back at Ray's residence, the FBI conducts a search and unearths a wealth of evidence linking Ray to the murder. Sarah receives an update about the double killing at the motel and Ray's getaway vehicle. We see Rachel still seething with anger towards Ray, who nonetheless seeks reconciliation. The scene shifts to an underground hired killer, eyeing a van. He's greeted by the vehicle yard owner, but the hitman swiftly kills him, snatches a shotgun, and makes off with the van. Meanwhile, Ray continues his journey along icy roads, but anticipating danger, decides to go off-road. He steps out of the vehicle to inspect the phones belonging to the mercenaries. He finds them brimming with calls from Vinod Shah, and uncovers that Shah has recently bought a property on the outskirts of Pittsburgh. Later, we see him felling a tree by a bridge and setting up a blockade to shut off access to the tunnel. He then retreats to the woods to practice his shooting skills, revealing he is a novice at this. Rachel reaches out to Sarah, expressing her concern about Ray's erratic behavior. Sarah, however, assures her that she is in the dry receipt. A disagreement ensues between Ray and Rachel as she demands to accompany him on his mission. Eventually, he yields and consents to her involvement. In another scene, we witness the hired killer assembling bombs for his shotgun. He steps outside to test their potency, 
discovering they are extremely volatile. Ray and Rachel are stationed outside Shaw's residence, waiting as darkness descends. The hitman's van happens to drive past them just as Shaw is seen departing from his home. Ray resumes driving, trailed by a convoy of SUVs. As he scatters a handful of iron screws on the road, one SUV suffers a tire puncture and falls behind, while the others continue their pursuit. Ray arrives at the tunnel where he had earlier erected a barrier. Parking his car in the shadows, he moves to clear the obstruction. Shaw's vehicles approach the tunnel only to find their way blocked by a tree. Shaw orders a retreat, but the rear SUV is obliterated by an oncoming bulldozer. Ray steps out of his vehicle, while Shaw's SUV, in pursuit of him, becomes ensnared by the fallen tree. The hitman arrives from the opposite end of the bridge, opening fire on the immobilized SUV. Shaw makes a run for it as the hitman sets his vehicle ablaze. Meanwhile, Ray instructs Rachel to remain in the car, locks horns with Shaw, and attempts to extract information about the main conspirator. Shaw merely laughs in response and falls silent, before being shot by the hitman. Ray makes a hasty retreat with the hitman hot on their heels, who manages to damage the rear tire of their car. They abandon the car and traverse through the woods until they stumble upon a tow truck station, from which they steal a truck and drive off. Rachel spots the familiar van parked outside a cafe, and they park the truck nearby before venturing inside. Here, Ray finds himself seated next to the hitman and initiates a conversation. From their exchange, he learns that it was Diana Morgan, a politician, who had commissioned him to eliminate all rivals, making her the primary culprit behind all the events. As they part ways, the hitman ominously mentions Rachel's address, hinting at a future encounter. The next morning, they depart in the tow truck while Sarah ponders over Rachel's predicament. Suddenly, a report of a stolen tow truck comes in, prompting Sarah to order surveillance of traffic cameras. By nightfall, they receive information that the tow truck was sighted nearing the city. The entire police force is mobilized to chase the truck, which zigzags through the city streets, circumventing a traffic jam on a bridge. Ray ditches the truck and attempts to evade capture on foot, with the FBI hot on his heels. He enters the stadium and the scene mirrors the film's opening sequence, with law enforcement agents tailing him to the edge of a rooftop. Ray comes to a halt on the ledge and Sarah signals for him to surrender. Suddenly, a stunning twist is revealed. Ray had actually died on the train, and it was Rachel who had been carrying out all these actions all along. She was the one who assassinated Simon, battled the mercenaries, apprehended Shaw, engaged with the hitman, and now stands on the rooftop. Rachel leaps into the sea, despite Sarah's attempts to dissuade her. The law enforcement agents rescue her and move her to an ambulance, but she regains consciousness and confronts the agents. The ambulance eventually collides with something, enabling her escape. She finds a bench to rest on, where she is comforted by Ray, who approaches her. Subsequently, she attends Diana's speech, keeping a keen eye on her. It is then that the hitman makes his appearance. Diana proceeds to the Congress Hall, and Rachel manages to infiltrate as well. Once inside, she's overcome with memories of Ray. She pulls out his jacket and dons it as she heads towards Diana's office. Upon her arrival, she is ambushed by the hitman. She gets hurled outside while the hitman calms the hall for her. When they eventually cross paths, they engage in a fierce battle. The hitman drags her to a fountain and attempts to submerge her. As she teeters on the brink of unconsciousness, she hears Ray's voice echoing in her mind, exhorting her to stay resilient. He addresses her affectionately as his sweet girl, spurring her to overpower the hitman. She stabs him repeatedly, his blood turning the fountain water red in her furious onslaught. She returns to Diana's office, intimidates her, and coerces her to confess all the bribery and scheming she had orchestrated with Bioprime. Instead of executing her, Rachel makes her exit, revealing later that she had been recording the entire confession on her phone. Once the FBI receives the incriminating recording, Diana is arrested for her corrupt deeds. Rachel finally finds inner tranquility. She procures a counterfeit passport, converts her money into cryptocurrency, and ultimately boards a flight to an undisclosed city, journeying into an undefined future.
If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.